Hello everyone. Welcome to Nestle Academy. In the previous lecture we understood how to declare and define variables in C++. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is initializing variables in C++. In this lecture we will understand how to initialize variables in C++. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is Assignment versus initialization. First, we will understand the difference between assignment and initialization. Then we will move to the next topic where we will understand different ways to initialize variables in C++. So these are the two topics which we need to study in this lecture. Let's get started with the first topic that is assignment versus initialization. And let's try to understand what is the difference between assignment and initialization. Let's now understand the difference between assignment and initialization. Assignment is the process of assigning value to a variable through assignment operator after it is defined. So, when we define a variable and after that we assign a value to that variable, then we call this process assignment. For example, here I have defined this variable var of type int. This means this variable can hold an integer. After definition, I have assigned this value 10 to this variable with the help of this assignment operator. So this is called assignment because here I have assigned this value after the definition of this variable and that too with the help of this assignment operator. So this process is called assignment. I hope it is clear to you what is the meaning of assignment. Now let's move to initialization. Initialization is the process of assigning value at the time of defining a variable. At the time when we define a variable and if we provide initial value to that variable, then we call that process initialization. For example, here I have defined this variable var. And at the same time, I'm also assigning this value 10 to this variable with the help of this assignment operator. So this is called initialization because at the time of definition of this variable, I am assigning value to this variable. I hope it is clear what is the meaning of initialization. So here I'm initializing this variable with value 10 and here I'm assigning value 10 to this variable. This is assignment. I would like to tell you that this way of initialization is inherited from C programming language. In C programming language, this is how we initialize a variable. But in C++ programming language, this is not the only way to initialize a variable. Although this type of initialization is inherited from C programming language, and this is the only way of initialization in C programming language, but in C++, this is not the only way to initialize a variable. This is what we will learn in the next topic. For now, we have understood the difference between assignment and initialization. And this means we are done with the first topic, that is assignment versus initialization. Now let's move to the second topic, where we will now understand different ways to initialize variables. Let's see what are the different ways to initialize variables in C++. The first way is default initialization. When variable is not initialized, it is initialized to a garbage value by default. So this is the case with default initialization. When we do not initialize a variable explicitly, it will be initialized to garbage value or some meaningless value by default. For example, here I have not initialized this variable age. This is the variable age of type int. This means it can hold an integer. But explicitly, I have not initialized this variable. So this variable will get a garbage value or a meaningless value. So if we try to print the value of this variable on the screen, we will get some meaningless value which we don't know where it came from. So, it will get a garbage value and this is called default initialization. We must avoid default initialization at all costs because 
it is always advisable to initialize a variable before we use it. I hope the first way of initialization is clear to you. This is default initialization. Now let's move to the second way. The second way of initialization is copy initialization. When initialization is done through assignment operator, it is called copy initialization. If we use the assignment operator to initialize a variable, then we call it copy initialization. For example, here I have initialized this variable with the help of copy initialization. I have used the assignment operator and I have assigned this value 30 to this variable at the time of definition of this variable. So this is copy initialization. This type of initialization is inherited from C programming language. I have already mentioned this. Apart from this, I want to emphasize on one point about copy initialization. This is important for you to understand. Prior to C++ 17, copy initialization was not a recommended way for initializing complex types like classes. We can use copy initialization for the purpose of initializing fundamental types like integers, floats, characters. It is recommended for fundamental types, but it was not recommended prior to C17 to use copy initialization for complex types like classes. The reason is the process that it follows. In case of copy initialization, the temporary object of the RHS, that is, right-hand side value, is created first. Then it is copied to the LHS, that is, left-hand side object. After this, the temporary object is deleted. This is the process that is followed for complex types, not for fundamental types. This is the reason why copy initialization was not recommended prior to C++17, because it is quite inefficient. First, the temporary object is created, then it is copied to the left-hand side object. This is quite inefficient. So, it was not recommended. But after C++17, copy initialization has been improved a lot and the problem has been reduced greatly. Due to this reason, some developers still prefer copy initialization for complex types because it feels natural to them. But I would not recommend copy initialization for one reason, even for fundamental types. And the reason is that it allows narrowing conversion. Now, what is the meaning of narrowing conversion? Narrowing conversion refers to the conversion of bigger type of value to smaller type of value. Now, let's understand the meaning of narrowing conversion with the help of an example. Let's take the same example of this variable age. This variable age is of type integer and I have assigned this integer value to this variable. So this is allowed because I have assigned the correct value to this variable. Now what happens if we assign 30.5 to this variable age? What do you think what will happen in this case? Do we get an error from the compiler? No, we will not get the error from the compiler we will lost 0.5 from 30.5 here and we will get 30 in the variable age. The reason is simple. Variable age can hold an integer value and we were trying to assign a floating point value or a decimal value which has a fraction part 0.5. An integer variable can hold an integer. So 0.5 will be truncated. This means 0.5 will be lost. And we will get 30 in this variable age. We will not get error from the compiler. This is called narrowing conversion. Internally, 30.5 has been converted to 30. 30.5 is a bigger type of value. 30 is a smaller type of value. So, bigger type of value has been converted to smaller type of value. And this is called narrowing conversion. Why it is called narrowing conversion? Because bigger type of value has been narrowed down to smaller type of value. 
That is why it is called narrowing conversion. Now, why I am saying that 30.5 is a bigger type of value and 30 is the smaller type of value? 30.5 has both the types, that is integer and the fraction part. On the other hand, integer type has just the integer part. It does not have the fraction part. So, compared to integer, fraction 30.5 is bigger type. I hope it is clear to you. So, bigger type has been converted to smaller type internally and this leads to data loss. So, this is the reason why narrowing conversion is disregarded and copy initialization is not recommended in modern C++ even for fundamental types like integer, floating point values and even characters. I hope this idea is clear to you. So, we have learned what is copy initialization and why we must not proceed with copy initialization because it allows narrowing conversion. Narrowing conversion leads to data loss. Hence, we must not proceed with copy initialization. Now, we have learned the second way of initializing variables in C++. Let's move to the third way. The third way of initialization is direct initialization. When initial value is provided within parentheses, that is called direct initialization. Prior to C++ 17, direct initialization was recommended for complex types because there is no copying process involved in case of direct initialization. A specific object is directly initialized. No copy process is involved. So, this is the reason direct initialization was recommended prior to C++17. But after C++17, there is not much difference between copy initialization and direct initialization. And it also allows narrowing conversion. Therefore, it is not recommended in modern C++. Now, let's take one example to understand how direct initialization is done. Here is the example. Here, I have initialized this variable age to value 30 within parentheses. So, in this way, we are doing direct initialization. I hope it is clear to you what is direct initialization. We have learned this third way of initialization as well. And this means we are done with three different ways of initializing variables. Now, let's move to the fourth way of initializing variables. The fourth way is list initialization. It is the modern way of initialization. Initial value can be provided within braces and it does not allow narrowing conversion. So, list initialization is considered the most modern way of initialization. It uses braces for initializing a variable and it does not allow narrowing conversion. This is one of the most important advantage of list initialization. It does not allow narrowing conversion. So, compared to other types of initialization, list initialization is recommended in modern C++. Let's see one example to understand how to list initialize a specific variable. Here, I have list initialized this variable age with value 30. Here you can observe I have used braces to initialize this variable age. This type of initialization is valid and considered the modern way of initialization. If let's say we decide to provide 30.5 to this variable age, then we will get error from compiler. It will not allow us to store 30.5 in variable age because variable age is of type integer. I hope the entire thing is completely clear to you. What is the meaning of list initialization and why it is considered the modern way of initialization and why it is recommended over other types of initialization. It does not allow narrowing conversion. Apart from this, it is also possible to assign multiple values to a specific type. We will learn about that type later in the course, but for now just understand that list initialization is recommended over other types. Now let's move to the fifth way of initializing variables and that is value initialization. When a variable is initialized using empty braces, it is called value initialization. 
it is possible to initialize a variable using empty braces. This is called value initialization. In most cases, a variable is initialized to zero or a value near to zero. For example, this variable age is value initialized. Here you can observe that I have initialized this variable with the help of these empty pair of braces. Apart from this, this variable will get value zero because this is an integer variable. So, variable age will be initialized to zero. This is also called zero initialization. So, we have learned five different ways to initialize variables in C++. And we learned that list initialization is recommended. So, the conclusion is, use list initialization because it prevents narrowing conversion. This is the first reason. And it works for all types without causing any confusion. What do I mean by this, that it works for all types without causing any confusion? Consider copy initialization. In case of copy initialization, we can easily confuse it with assignment because both uses assignment operator. In case of direct initialization, we can easily confuse it with function call because function call also uses parentheses. In case of list initialization, there is no confusion at all between different types. It works for all types without causing any confusion because of the syntax it follows. It uses braces and with braces, there is no confusion between different types. I hope it is clear to you. So, this is one of the reasons why list initialization is recommended in modern C++. And I hope with this you have understood what are the different ways to initialize variables and what is the most recommended way to initialize a variable. And with this, we are done with the second topic as well, that is ways to initialize variables. And we are done with this entire lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.